Coming up on this edition of SUTV News, local break-ins occur in the area. Top national athletes are in Fargo this week for a unique sport. And in sports, the Bison football team sustains multiple injuries. This is SUTV News, and it starts now. Welcome to SUTV News. I'm Bryn Nelson. And I'm Jared Maidenwald. There were two on-campus fires this week involving vehicles. The first incident occurred at the Wellness Center on Tuesday around 3 in the afternoon. The second fire occurred last night at around 5.30 in the T-Lot. The fire station arrived and had to put out both of the fires. NDSU police say that they don't suspect any suspicious activity with both incidents and that this time of year with cars just starting to use their heat, this isn't extremely unusual. But it is, however, unusual to have this happen within days of each other. If you live around campus, you should be extra careful about locking your doors and windows. The Fargo Police Department are investigating a series of recent break-ins occurring on the north side of Fargo. Police report in the past three weeks at least five residential break-ins have occurred. The areas included apartments between 12th Avenue North and Dakota Drive and between University Drive and 19th Street North. The most recent break-ins involved a person entering individual apartments by cutting open a window screen or finding their way in by an unlocked door or window. The police believe the same person is responsible for all five of the recent break-ins. That if they're leaving their room and they're not nearby that they shut their door lock their door even in a residence hall where they it's controlled access we, we still recommend that that they don't leave their doors unlocked if they can't see or hear what's going on in their room so and DSU police also provide an escort service for students 24 hours a day to get them safely to their destination after months of being banned from the sidelines of bison games the NDSU dance team is back o officials in their dance co-captains negotiated an agreement to continue to perform at sporting events. The dance team can start performing once again after their national championships in January. NDSU Athletics put a stop to the tiers after the team was using athletic facilities for unauthorized practices. Dance team head coach Megan Webner stated any wrongdoing was unintentional. Both parties seem eager to move forward with this decision this documentation to move forward to have um, all of these things kind of in place just for future leaders following the team is really positive. The dance team's first performance will be during the basketball season starting in January. They will also perform at a Minnesota Timberwolves game against the Miami Heat in December. NDSU football suffered a blow this past weekend and it wasn't on the scoreboard. Leading tackler Grant Olson, senior middle linebacker for the Bison, tore his ACL on the third play of the second half against Illinois State. Carlton Littlejohn filled in for Olsen and had a career-high 16 tackles on Saturday. Marcus Williams also suffered an MCL sprain and Ryan Smith sat out with a high ankle sprain. However, Smith will play this Saturday at Youngstown State, whereas Williams is questionable. Top national athletes for a unique sport are all in Fargo this week. The U.S. Winter Olympics curling trials are underway at the Shields Arena. There are five men's and four women's teams competing. The winning Women, women's team earns a trip to the trials in February, where the men's team must compete in the Olympic qualifier next month in Germany. While there, the men's team will be competing for one of the two remaining spots to Sochi, Russia. We've had a great turnout so far. We're really excited to see the crowds are gradually increasing every day of the tournament. Yesterday we had a couple hundred students from the area schools in town here. Fargo is a community that's rich in curling history, so it's kind of a perfect fit to bring our elite athletes here and to have them on the stage here at Shields. The winners at the trials are determined by a best of three championship series. On Friday, the Shields Arena is hosting a college day where students get in for only $5. There are approximately 21.8 million veterans in the United States and all were honored Monday. Originally called our Mistis Day, Veterans Day is an official United States federal holiday that celebrates the service of all U.S. military veterans. Veterans Day was first celebrated on November 11, 1919, the one-year anniversary of the end of fighting in World War I. NDSU hosted a Veterans Day vigil from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Alumni Center. Cadets kept attention for hours during the cold temperatures and snow to honor their comrades, trading off marching around the flagpole for 15-minute increments. To me, Veterans Day is a chance to remember all of the uh, courageous effort and sacrifice that those who have served before us and those who will serve have put forward for our nation. It's an excellent opportunity to remember that military service is, 
is an intensive job and it requires a lot of effort, a lot of sacrifice, and that uh, it's not an easy task. Many people confuse Veterans Day with Memorial Day. Memorial Day honors military personnel who died serving their country, whereas Veterans Day honors all those who served honorably in the military in wartime or peacetime. Recognizing the efforts of those who sacrificed themselves for the nation, this nation, NDSU's veterans were honored on Tuesday at the Memorial Union. Veterans Day events are meant to honor the men and women who volunteer for the peace and security of this country. The event was sponsored by many branches on campus, including the Office of Registration and Records, Division of Equity, Diversity and Global Outreach, Memorial Union, Campus Program Foundation, U.S. Bank, and NDSU American Legion Post 400. There were moments of silence to remember homeless veterans, wounded veterans, dedicated Air Force and overseas, Marines and Army soldiers. Veterans Day is important for all veterans for the sacrifice that the F uh, fellow veterans have given over the period of time and that have the future generations are willing to sacrifice to keep our nation free. This event is very important to the veterans because it shows that they are recognized on campus as people who remain who are under services that protect our country from enemies. In light of Veterans Day, NDSU hosted honorary events including an exhibit and reception earlier this week. Brie Bachmeyer has a story highlighting the bravery of our veterans, particularly airmen. 1943 to 1945. As a part of NDSU's Veterans Day celebration, U.S. Air Force veteran and oral historian Ron Spriggs visited our campus to bring his exhibit of the Tuskegee Airmen. The Tuskegee Airmen are America's first black military airmen, and their most significant success story is credited with the prompting of the integration of the U.S. Armed Forces an important story to share for our recent national holiday. We need to observe those who've made the supreme sacrifice, either by life or by limb. There are many people who did not walk away once they went over. After Ron's exhibit, people, including Ron, shuffled in for a reception to honor NDSU staff faculty, and student veterans for their service. Stu Bass was at NDSU then also. We didn't have the pretty girls on the nose, you know, that they, all the Army had. A veteran himself, Stu has a sharp memory of his service. He showed me the plane he flew, even marked with his name, a TBM Avenger torpedo bomber. He was one of the 23 pilots in Air Group 9's torpedo squadron involved with 78 bombing missions in World War II. I guess what amazes me most about, about uh, Veterans Day is the number of people that come up and they know you were in the service or what you did. They come up and shake your hand and say thank you. And that always kind of almost embarrassing sometimes because all we were doing was doing our job. An honorable job of this 92-year-old pilot, as well as Ron, other airmen, and all of our veterans. Bree Bachmeyer, SUTV News. This is Ron's 11th year involved with the exhibit of the Tuskegee Airmen, and Stu is a heavily involved volunteer at the Fargo Air Museum. NDSU's Blue Key Honor Society is once again looking for volunteers to help the Salvation Army reach their fundraising goals. Groups or individuals can sign up at the Sign Up Genius website to work at the Northport Hornbachers. If your organization is interested, they can call Catherine Cho or Skylar Long to set up times that work best. Everything from the aprons to the bell is provided. All they ask you to bring is a welcoming face. After the break, we'll show you how help is on the way to students writing papers after this week's seven-day forecast. future is constantly unfolding. No one knows better than those preparing for it. Every week, NDSU's student-run television organization, the Bison Information Network, brings you SUTV News with news about NDSU, the campus community, 
and current events affecting you. Watch SUTV News on Cable One, Channel 14, Friday and Saturday at 9 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m. Deke's Pizza, prices with a student in mind. Fast delivery and conveniently open until 3 a.m. Order by phone at 701-235-0708. Order online at deekspizza.com or order with Deke's easy-to-use mobile app. NDSU, make Deke's your choice for pizza this semester. That's Deke's, great pizza that won't empty your pockets. SUTV News is brought to you by Stop and Go. Stop and Go. We're always there. Welcome back. Many college students have trouble writing papers, including those at NDSU. But now, help is on the way. SUTV's Nate Manning has more. It used to be just for students with disabilities on campus, but now all of that is changing. After reading more about it, utilizing it more, getting more in-depth into the program, we realized this had implications for many different kinds of students, not just a student with a disability. In conjunction with Student Affairs, the Read and Write Gold software is now available for all students, faculty, and staff at NDSU. The computer-based software's main purpose is to help students improve their reading, writing, research, and study skills. With a variety of options, Read and Write Gold can be used by anyone. Every student uh, that's using it is probably going to get a variety of different things out of it. It really depends upon the student's style of learning, I think, um, with all the tools that are built into the program. Read and Write Gold can be used in any computer cluster on campus. The software can reach prices of over $500, so the software being free is a big deal for students. Anytime that you have software that costs, it sometimes presents a barrier for those students and we can't get into the hands of the students that may really need it. Read and Write Gold hopes to have a lasting impact on students' education. They are using it to improve their study skills, their reading ability, their writing ability, their research ability, their organizational skills, um, that they're improving their skills because that's the goal. Nate Manning reporting, SU TV News. Other training sessions for Read and Write Gold are taking place on November 18th at 1 p.m. and the 19th at 11 a.m. in the IAC Building Room 150D. More information can be found at ndsu.edu slash its slash read dash write dash gold. The Office of International Programs celebrated International Education Week this week with a variety of events. Study abroad returnees shared their experiences on Tuesday and Wednesday in the Memorial Union. A travel photography and video workshop was held so that students heading abroad could pick up a few tips and come back home with a great image to remember their trip. Lisa Hawk, who has studied and worked throughout Asia, gave a presentation about how China has changed socially, culturally, and politically. Students will get their last chance tomorrow to be a part of the International Education Week. Study abroad returnees will gain, again chat about their experiences in the Memorial Union. I'm also hoping that they will um, uh, take a little bit more deliberative approach to their experience abroad. Um, it's easy to get really um, excited about what's happening and um, not really give it kind of the long thought and then afterwards it can be kind of challenging. To place. A study abroad photo contest will be running until December 2nd on the NDSU study abroad Facebook page. Thanksgiving is approaching and there are many international students who have nowhere to spend it. After the break, we'll show you how some people at NDSU are trying to help. The future is constantly unfolding. No one knows better than those preparing for it. Every week, NDSU's student-run television organization, the Bison Information Network, brings you SUTV News with news about NDSU, the campus community, 
and current events affecting you. Watch SUTV News on Cable One, Channel 14, Friday and Saturday at 9 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m. Jitters is the NDSU Campus Community's Coffee Hub. Conveniently located right next to campus, Jitters Coffee has a wide range of amenities, including comfortable seating, Wi-Fi, and an assortment of beverages. Jitters is here to meet your needs, whether you're looking to relax and socialize or study in a rich, active environment. Be sure to make your way over for your morning brew, a bite at lunch, or for a break between classes. Get your fix only at Jitters. The MDSU Bookstore, where every true fan and alum goes to get their pride on. Gear up with a variety of high quality t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, and more. Don't forget about Scratch Off Friday. Before every Bison football home game, you have a chance to get as much as 50% off all your clothing and gift items. Your next Scratch Off Friday is November 22nd. Deke's Pizza. Prices with a student in mind. Fast delivery and conveniently open until 3 a.m. Order by phone at 701-235-0708. Order online at deekspizza.com or order with Deke's easy-to-use mobile app. NDSU. Make Deke's your choice for pizza this semester. That's Deke's. Great pizza that won't empty your pockets. SUTV News is a production of the Bison Information Network in conjunction with North Dakota State University's Department of Communication Broadcast Program. For more information, go to www.ndsubin.com. The Tapestry of Diverse Talents is looking for a new member. This Memorial Union program is a pictorial mosaic that recognizes students, faculty, staff, and alumni for the cultural diversity and contributions they bring to NDSU. Each semester, new individuals are introduced into the tapestry and for reflecting the ages, ethnicities, beliefs, and values of the university community. All nominations materials must be received in the Student Activities Office by 1 p.m. November 19th, and the induction ceremony will be, will he will be held December 13th. Thanksgiving is coming and there are many international students with nowhere to go. For the fourth year in a row, the Vice President of Equity, Diversity and Global Outreach is offering a program to help these students. The Thanksgiving host program is a way for NDSU students to spend the holiday with a local family. In the past three years, around 25 and 37 families sign up to host international students. Between 60 and 75 students and their family members sign up for the program each year. I have somebody from my church who hosted somebody a few years ago and talked about how, oh, the student play video games with my kids all day, and um, we hope they come back for Christmas. So it just seems like it's a really, it begins a friendship that you might not expect. Any NDSU faculty or staff member can become a host by filling out a brief form online. If you, ha if you haven't heard already, there are some stores that will be opening up quite early on Thanksgiving Day for this year's Black Friday. This week for Sidewalk Stampede, we asked students what their thoughts were about this and if they'll be participating. Are you a Black Friday shopper? Um, I'm a really passive Black Friday shopper. I go a little bit later, but it's not. I don't like wake up early, I guess, and try to do all them big stuff. So do you think that you'll go on Thanksgiving night to Black Friday, or do you wait till Friday? I will definitely wait till Friday. I don't know. Just being with family on Thanksgiving, I think, is just more fun for me and important. And then I live a little bit away, too, from bigger stores. I'm from a small town, so don't have much availability either. For me, that's time to spend with my family and be with them, and I enjoy doing that a lot more than shopping. Do you Black Friday shop? Uh, no, I do not. And why not? I don't like the crowds. Too many people. Crazy. Did you know that this year they are opening, stores are opening like Thanksgiving night. What do you think about that? Really? Yes. That's insane. Do you think it's kind of, I don't know, taking over the holiday? Yeah, that's a little greedy. Right. Right. I think Thanksgiving should be giving thanks for what we have, not going out and getting more. This year they're opening stores on Thanksgiving night instead of, you know, early in the morning on mm -hmm. Friday. What do you think about that? I don't know. I just think if you're going to go Black Friday shopping, it should always be on Black Friday. And um, they always, like last year, they opened up even earlier and it just keeps on getting pushed like sooner and sooner. Do you think that eventually Thanksgiving will just turn into a shopping holiday? 
I, I think so. You know, if they can make money off it, they're going to do it. Ali Thorson from Sports. So, Ali, this weekend a big game for NDSU football. That's right. NDSU is really going to have to step up there playing at Youngstown. It's going to be a tough game, and we will have more on that game coming up right after the break. The NDSU Bookstore, where every true fan and alum goes to get their pride on. Grew up with a variety of high quality t shirts, sweatshirts, hats, and more. Don't forget about Scratch Off Friday. Before every Bison football home game, you have a chance to get as much as 50% off all your clothing and gift items. Your next Scratch Off Friday is November 22nd. I'm Mariah, and I'm at bus because not only does it save me money, but with 20 different routes, it makes getting around Fargo much more convenient. I'm at bus. Do you? Deke's Pizza. Prices with a student in mind. Fast delivery and conveniently open until 3 a.m. Order by phone at 701-235-0708. Order online at geekspizza.com or order with Deeks' easy-to-use mobile app. NDSU. Make Deeks your choice for pizza this semester. That's Deeks. Great pizza that won't empty your pockets. <laughs> SU TV Sports is brought to you by Shields. Ready for your next big adventure? Welcome to Shields. Welcome back. Coming into Saturday's game against Illinois State, the Bison were riding two winning streaks. The Bison had not lost a game coming off a of bye week since 2005, and we're currently on a 17-game winning streak. Now let's take it out to the Fargo Dome while the Bison will take on the Redbirds. First quarter, Bison leading 7-0. Brock Jetson finds Kevin Vadeland. Touchdown, Bison up 14-0. Early second quarter, Blank Winkler hands off to Marshawn Koprick for the touchdown. Bison on the next drive. Jensen finds Zach Vra for a 26-yard touchdown. Vra would have two TDs for the day. Third play of the third quarter, Cameron Hunt with the handoff. Grant Olson gets the tackle but leaves the field with an injury. First Bison possession of the third quarter, Bison leading 21-10. Jensen finds Vodaland again. David Perkins punches that ball out, and Tevin Allen will recover the fumble, but the Bison defense will stay strong. Fourth quarter, Jensen hands off to John Crockett for the touchdown, and that would be it. The Bison would win the game 28-10, but they would lose a few key players. Senior linebacker and captain Grant Olson tore his ACL and will be out for the rest of the season. Cornerback Marcus Williams sprained his MCL and is questionable for Saturday's game against Youngstown State. The Bison will take on the Penguins Saturday in Youngstown, Ohio, but with Grant Olson out with the year with his torn ACL, Carlton Littlejohn will play middle linebacker for NDSU, and Nestle Thornton slides in to start at outside linebacker opposite of Travis Beck. Well, after falling short in the Summit League Championship game, the Bison men's basketball team started their season with high expectations. The Bison were picked to win the Summit League in the preseason poll and were eager to get the new year underway. Well, let's take it out to the Bison Sports Arena where the Bison would take on the Turbo. Opening possession, Lawrence Alexander finds Corey Brown in the corner for the jumper and he is up 2-0. A few minutes later, Bison down by one. Taylor Braun kicks it out to Lawrence Alexander for a three-pointer, and ESU will take the lead. Midway through the first half, Matt Turba finds Cole Lewis for a nice three-pointer. The Turbo still will hang around, but late, late, late in the first half, Taylor Braun passes to Mike Felt to knock down that three, and ESU begins to pull away 32-14. 
Taylor Braun then alley oop to Trayvon Wright off the blackboard. They extend the lead 53 to 23, and late in the second half, Mike Felt hits his seventh three of the night. NDSU went on to win 93 to 49 behind Felt's game high 23 points. Felt tied the school record with seven three pointers in the game. In preseason, Summit League Player of the Year Taylor Braun added 16 points for the Bison. NDSU will travel to Moraga, California to take on the mid-major powerhouse St. Mary's on Thursday before returning home to battle Southern Mississippi on Monday. Now back out to the Bison Sports Arena we go for women's volley basketball excuse me, against Mayville State. Pick up the action through the first. Hannah Bresky finds fellow freshman Bree Wadman for the three. Second half, another freshman gets in the mix. This time, it's Emily Spear with the jumper. She had 12 points on the game. And Alyssa Brown hits the jumper from the corner as everybody had it going on that night. NDCU looked impressive as they broke the century mark. Made the Bison went on to win 112-62 behind Marina Whittle's game-high 20 points. Now, 112 is the most points scored by a Bison women's basketball team since the 2002-2003 season. Now, out to the Benson Bunker Fieldhouse we go for volleyball against Omaha. First set, a quick volley here, one, two, three, kill for freshman Emily Myron. They will take that set 25-15. On to the second set we go. We have a nice long volley here as that goes back and forth, but the big kill from Emily Minnick. NDSU will take that set 25-21. to They would also take the third set 25-22. Now, NDSU is really looking forward to the Summit League Championship after having to watch it from the bleachers last season. So they're very excited about getting to the tournament this year. Yeah, NDSU volleyball is looking very good this year. Yeah, they're a very young team. I know the expectations for Coach Thompson's team uh, maybe weren't that as high as they were at the very beginning of the season. But they played well at the end uh, with some good Summit League play. NDSU is preparing for the winter break. We'll tell you how after the break, so stay with us. Computers and other technology have become central components of modern university life. At NDSU, the Help Desk can assist students with many of their technology needs. So let's talk tech. Staffed by both students and full-time employees, the NDSU Help Desk can be found in three locations on campus. The first is located downtown in Barry Hall 270, the second in the main library near the reference desk on the first floor, and the final and main Help Desk is located in IAC 150. In addition to on-location assistance, the Help Desk also offers support by phone at 701-231-8685, by email at ndsu.helpdesk at ndsu.edu, and by online live chat accessible on the Help Desk website. Help Desk consultants can assist with the setup and maintenance of NDSU online services including Blackboard, Student Office 365 accounts, your NDSU electronic ID, as well as your North Dakota University System Campus Connection account. Additionally, the Help Desk offers support connecting your computer to both the NDSU wireless networks and NDSU Go Print stations. Besides technical assistance, the Help Desk also provides large-scale printing services. Students can print posters up to 36 or 42 inches wide on high-quality glossy satin or matte finish papers. Finally, the NDSU Help Desk also provides an equipment checkout service at no cost to students. Equipment available for checkout includes laptops, digital camcorders and cameras, desktop speakers, audio recording equipment, and more. All equipment reservations are done online from the Help Desk website. For more information about Help Desk services, stop by one of the three locations or check out the Help Desk website www.ndsu.edu slash ITS help underscore desk. Winter is approaching and NDSU is getting prepared. The Division of Finance and Administration recently announced its procedures and protocols for storm operations. Every student and employee at NDSU is required to be a part of the campus emergency notification system. Another way for students to find out campus operations is by calling the NDSU information update line at 231-INFO. Once campus is clear and classes can resume, the campus emergency notification system sends out an all clear alert. I get message two ways. There's one that you can register through text and there's one through email. 
So it tell you if there's emergency like storm and something like that. NDSU asked students and faculty to refrain from calling university police during storms in order to keep that line open for critical emergencies. Thank you for watching this edition of SU TV News. Be sure to check us out on Facebook or Twitter. Also, visit us at ndsubin.com for the chance to win some special prizes. Have a great night.